All right, here we go. We're here with the Gettinger family. Um, graduating, Matthew, after six months in the program. And what an amazing six months it has been. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves real quick. Um, my name is Margaret. I'm Matthew. And I'm Steve, Matthew's father. Excellent. And tell us, let's just start from the beginning. Uh, what was going on in life uh, for Matthew that brought you guys to Brain Balance originally? What kind of symptoms and diagnoses and things like that? Okay. Well, when Matthew was smaller, he was diagnosed by his pediatrician as having Asperger's. And uh, last August, we started middle school. And it was really hard on him because it was a big school, uh, lots of transitioning, which Asperger's children have trouble with. And it was seven different directions, seven different teachers. And it was just really hard on him. Uh, we actually made it till the end of October, and then we started getting calls from the counselor saying Matthew was crying in class or just getting really frustrated in class, and they really weren't sure how to handle it. And so by about the middle of October, we ended up in detention, huh? And that really hurt us. We'd never been in detention before. Um, Matthew's really smart, got really good grades, just academically great. So we weren't real sure, you know, all of a sudden we're going to detention and we didn't know what to do. And so uh, took him to his pediatrician and we talked to him and he explained to us with Asperger's, you know, they do have a lot of trouble transitioning and, you know, do get their feelings hurt really easily and crying and, and having some meltdowns. Mm -hmm. And so he suggested that he go on Zoloft just to kind of calm his nerves, um, which was something we'd never done before, never been on medicine. And uh, so we thought, okay, we'll give it a try. And um, then we kind of started noticing um, just wringing of his hands all the time. Mm. I just thought it was nerves. Uh, then he started with taking off his glasses and if he would clean them once, he'd clean them 20 times before he took, put them back on. Uh, then my husband and I watching TV in the evenings started kind of noticing, you know, a little of this, a little of this. And again, just thought, why is he doing that? Mm. Had never seen that before. And then before. he had the, the eyes, the Tourette's, the rolling his eyes up and okay. flicking and, his eyes. Yeah, and blinking. Blinking, bad. He'll be watching TV and blinking and batting his eyes, and we don't even think he, he knew he was doing it. Sure, no, he didn't. You know. But after, I would say that's the first thing I noticed after probably four weeks of, of brain balance, none of that. It was gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was gone. That's awesome. Yeah. But, but school wasn't going well at all. You know, by Christmas, or by Thanksgiving, we noticed he had pulled all his eyelashes out. And then we started noticing his nice fingernails were either torn or bit off, and maybe some of the skin kind of picked at. Mm -hmm. You know, again, the doctor said that was the Tourette's. And so uh, we just wanted to make it till Christmas break because we needed a break. And then right before Christmas break, you know, he had a pretty major meltdown in a class and uh, we ended up in detention for about a week, which wasn't good. So we uh, had a great Christmas break, thought, you know, we're gonna start fresh. And finally in January, the school finally started doing some testing on Matt for us. And they actually said that their test showed he was severely autistic, which was something we had never heard before. Pediatrician always said it was just the Asperger's. So, you know, we let them do their test and, um, you know, some days were good at school and other days he would cry. Some days I had to go get him. Some weeks we got calls and sometimes it was about every other day or even every day we'd get a call from school. And so finally it got to be February and um, had another meltdown and got in trouble. And I remember getting the call from the principal saying, you know, he's going back at detention again. And so I remember calling the doctor and I was basically saying, we got to change the medicine. We got to up the medicine. We got to do something because we got to make it till May. We got to get through school this year. And that's when he pretty much told me on the phone that he didn't know if there was anything anybody could do. You know, he basically told me how he was, was how he was going to be. And I remember hanging up the phone and saying, no, no, there, there's another call I can make. <laughs> because Matthew had a friend years ago who had some issues. And uh, he went through the program. 
and his grandmother had given me a book about three years ago and you read it and I put it in the drawer and I remember saying my son's not that bad and that book was in the drawer and I remembered where it was and um, so that's when I made the call up here and said you know I really need your help I need him tested we need to find out what's going on because I kept telling myself you know if Matt's friend could get the help and he was fine now then we knew that you could help us with him and so we did we came up and we did the test and come to find out he was just severely out of balance and so we started the program on March the 3rd and we started coming up three nights a week hour and 15 minute drive up the hour and 15 minute drive home we leave our house about five and get home about nine Matthew still did his homework still went to school every day and we had some bad days still and then we had some good days and then school ended and um, we had lots of time in the summer we did our exercises at home yeah he, he sacrificed his summer he worked hard all summer yeah so we, the hard part we only missed one off. one session and then you know we made it up and uh, no he didn't take a long Christmas or long summer vacation and we didn't skip days and we did everything we were told and some and we were so excited when we did his first uh, testing that showed how how much he had gone up and I remember telling him you know man if we work really hard we could get done by the time school starts or right after school starts even though Mike had told us from the initial testing that he thought it was going to be at least a year at least but Matthew worked really hard and you know we pretty much made this top priority over everything everything was centered around this and you followed the diet too followed the diet, the diet uh, took his supplements did all the exercises we were told and he did it we couldn't yeah. do it for him he had to do it how are things now if compared to the things you described before brain balance before the program how are things those those meltdowns and those the crying and the school issues and the temper tantrums and all those things it's better. night and day oh much better night and day even at home if you if you try some things that you knew you couldn't do before with him he's different he looks at me you like uh, looks at me like you're trying to trick me, Dad. Or you know, <laughs> yeah, we, you're playing with me, so yeah. he's got a he's got a smile. He smiles a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> smiles a lot, laughs a lot. Um, no more ticks. No more ticks no. at all. Um, gets it with friends. Enjoys school. I remember at Christmas break, he even said, "I don't want to go back to school." Yeah, he. Because it was so hard on him. I'd take him to school in the morning, and he'd be sitting in the back of the car, just like this, rubbing his hands. He didn't want to go. Now you like school, don't you? Now he wants to get to school early so he can visit with friends. <laughs> and the transitioning so, uh, isn't bothering that's, him. That's good. He's not having meltdowns. He's not crying. He's happy again. Ah. It's like we got our son back. That's awesome. You feel better? Yeah. You're having fun? Right. Yeah. Enjoying life? Yep. That's awesome. Well, let me ask you guys. Uh, if you could give advice to somebody who is in a similar situation and they're trying to decide, like, how do we do this? How do we make this commitment to this program that, you know, they don't know if it's going to work and they're not sure how to make it work? with their life what do you say to them you have to come up you have to get tested you have to see what's going on with your child for sure and you have to make that commitment because I remember telling my husband if we don't do this and something happens to us who's gonna take care of him you know we we knew that we needed <coughs> to get him help and we needed to get him <coughs> fixed so to say yeah not just for us but for him and it was worth it I thought that's what I'll tell everybody. If you commit to it, it's worth it. 
But you have to follow your own program. And that's You've what, got to that's do what, what we told were told to make it work. By our friend that they came through it and they said, you do it, commit to it, and it'll be worth it. And he was exactly right. Mm -hmm. And you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. That's awesome. You worked really yeah. hard. I'm proud of you. Anything you want to say, Matthew? Well, if you're just starting, like, like Dad said, you you have to commit to it. You have to do what you're told, and you just you gotta work as hard as you can. You try your best. You you just can't give up. Do as many sets as you can, and eventually your brain will be balanced and you will be fixed. That's awesome. That's cool. That's true. What um, if there's another kiddo out there who's maybe eight or ten or twelve, even fifteen years old, and he's struggling with school? What advice? What would you tell him to do right now if he's, or maybe also somebody who's just started brain balance, maybe in their first day? or first week of brain balance, what kind of advice would you give to those kiddos? Like, don't stress about anything. Just be calm. Um, work as hard as you can, and you'll do great. That's awesome, that's good advice. That's very good advice. Well, I'm proud of you guys, big time. It was an amazing thing, what you've done changed your own life it's cool stuff and thank you for sharing your story I really appreciate it I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there who needed to hear that you don't have to live with that kind of stuff Tourette's and Asperger's you don't have to live with that you can just be happy and there are people out there who can help, even when people tell you maybe there's not. There are. Yeah. You just gotta pick up that phone and make that first call. That's true. You just gotta do it. It's a commitment. You just gotta do it. Mm -hmm. When we came here the first time, when we left here, we knew what, we knew we were gonna do it. And Matt wanted to do it. Yeah. He, he was on board. We didn't have to force him, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, we didn't have trouble with him doing his exercises or anything. In fact, a lot of times he would say, okay, come on, we need to get started. Yeah, he and was, he would mark he, it off the sheet himself. And, you yeah, know, he I'm was great. He was great with all that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Well, again, I'm proud of you, and thank you for sharing your story. Thank and you. we'll be checking back later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. You're welcome.